Hi all. So I've been quite interested in the libertarian political philosophy for quite a while, seeing as we don't really have many libertarians in Australian politics. Um, I don't have much exposure to it. And so I've been kind of curious about how it would play out, but I haven't really taken many steps to find out. Now, just today, somebody linked to a Ron Paul post on Facebook, and I followed it through on Reddit. Now, I've, I've been interested in Ron Paul um, since people seem to hold him up as a sort of a good example of libertarianism and um, sort of a bit of like the thinking man's libertarian. Someone who sort of knows his stuff and sort of you know, has strong convictions. Now, I've also heard lots of criticism of him, so I'm kind of curious to hear sort of from the man himself some of his ideas to see how well they play out. Anyway, it's a USA Today article, and I'll put a link to the article in the description box. And it's called Ron Paul, um, Crimea Succeeds, So What? So it's about the Crimea succession vote. Um, and off the bat, I want to say I am quite disappointed in Ron Paul's um, analysis here. So he opens up with a sort of comparing the Crimean vote to leave Ukraine and join Russia, and he compares it to uh, other uh, Scotland, Catalonia and Venice, all of which, as he says, are seeking to secede and the secession is proceeding without much notice. And can contrast that to come up Crimea, the situation has you know, caused outrage in Europe and the US. Um, now, the problem I have with that is that Ron Paul is the comparison between Scotland, Catalonia, Venice on one side and the Crimea on the other is a very poor comparison. Um, the reason that Scotland, Catalonia and Venice are, as he says, proceeding without much notice is because these are long, um, but these have been long proceedings. Now, that is very important. Um, the matter of succession is not a simple one. It is never just a simply a matter of saying, oh, well, we want to leave and then we'll just cut off a bit. There's a lot of complicated issues to work through, not least of which is that you rarely, if ever, have unanimous support for succession. And when you don't have unanimous support, then you have to work out, is it better for you, the majority to get their wish or is it better to stay for the status quo to remain or is there a middle step between succession which would better meet the needs of all people involved? I mean, these are complicated issues. Now, Crimea situation to the best of my understanding, has been a relatively recent one, and one, that's the other reason why it's quite different, is Scotland, Catalonia and Venice want to secede from their parent country and become autonomous regions or countries in their own right. Um, the Crimea situation probably would have been quite different had that been what the Crimeans were arguing for, or, or what was happening was that they were looking to secede and become you know, the independent republic of Crimea, for example, the fact that they wanted, they apparently wanted to join Russia raised a lot of red flags. This would be like if Catalonia were trying to leave to join Portugal, say, or France, or um, Scotland wanted to leave to become part of Ireland. Um, that would be quite a different situation um, and would have raised a lot more eyebrows. And the fact that it was done what seemed like almost overnight in political terms, again raises eyebrows as to whether this was a free and fair process. So he goes on to say that, oh, you know, apparently the, the, the referendum was apparently not held within, you know, the legality of um, the Ukrainian constitution. But he said, well, you know, but the UN Charter says that, you know, um, we should support the self-determination of peoples. Now, that's true. Um, the reason why we don't just arbitrarily let people well, encourage people to secede um, with simple overnight votes is because all the self-determination of peoples means the self-determination of all peoples, all residents within Crimea. And those people who don't want to secede, um, how exactly are we supporting their self-determination? And if your argument is simply that the majority should have their way, then what you are advocating is a kind of democracy that allows the tyranny of the mob. Um, where minority groups have basically are outvoted by the majority and we can treat them any way we like. This is why in most countries we're not strictly democracies because actually um, the democratic will is, act is to some extent uh, under the law of the land and that actually we have a rule of law rather than a rule by the people so that we don't have these mob issues. Then he says a complete... Uh, this is just an appeal to... He says, you know, why does the US care which flag will be hoisted on a small piece of land thousands of miles away? As if that was the issue. As if they were just changing a flag. Um, then he does a complete um, ad hominem. Where he says that, oh, well, 
you know, all those people who are objecting to the Russian troops in Crimea and saying that that was, you know, probably something to be concerned about in the free and fair elections that held in Crimea. Where were these people when an election held in Iraq, occupied by US troops, was called a dry room for democracy, democracy? Now, I don't know about in the US. And obviously, yeah, okay, point out somebody else's hypocrisy. It doesn't make it right. Just because the US did poorly doesn't mean that then it's okay for Russia to then behave poorly. And secondly, I tell you where we were, um, around the world, there were lots of people like me who opposed both of these things. Then he goes on to criticise some of his um, uh, political um, opponents in the US. Um, and th that's it, basically. So, all in all, rather disappointed in Ron Paul's argument here. He makes no real attempt to explain why... Well, he uses a false analogy between Crimea and Scotland, Catalonia, and Venice. He then uses a ad hominem of, well, you did it too, so how, how have you had to criticise me? Um, and then he turns it into, well, it's okay because there's all, you know, we've got trade with, you know, the Ukraine and Crimea and Russia, so therefore we really shouldn't be doing anything about this. Um, this is not the kind of high policy principled argument that I was expecting from him and that his uh, supporters seem to suggest that he's able to provide. So he's hoping I can find a better example of libertarianism sometime soon um, so that I can actually have something to wrestle with because that is pretty poor. See you next time.